Hey, 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 y'all. It's your sister, Jessica J, coming on again. But I want y'all to listen to this song right quick. Even at my worst, you love me. Even at my worst, you give me. I don't deserve. Even at my worst. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In you, Lord. Yes, it's beautiful. Even at my worst. Something I don't deserve Being at my worst Lord, you're big enough He said, when I, fi- when I feel small, you pick me up When I feel small and, un- and defeated He makes me big enough he-, he says that we are more than conquerors It's something I don't deserve At my worst Yes, yes, yes Yeah, he's made beauty for ashes I don't deserve Even at my worst That girl has Hey, y'all I had to maneuver to my back uh, porch to give y'all this word. So the Lord has been dealing with me about my patience and waiting on him for um, the promise that he's given me or whatever. Um, And he's been dealing with me on knowing who I am in him knowing who I am in Christ so he give, he's gave, given me a revelation that's coming from um, Romans chapter 7 no excuse me Romans chapter 8 and um, it reads there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus for the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law for God for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. He was saying that you can't do anything within your flesh that it's only through spirit that he gives you strength. So he said, by sending my, by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So again, you have to um adjust yourself until the spirit think in the spirit speak in the spirit um just gather yourself according to the spirit he said for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit for to set the mind on the flesh is death but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. So if you set your mind on the spirit, he said that you will have life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. For it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those, he said, in those who are in the flesh cannot please God 
And he told me on a side note that not everyone has the spirit of Christ. And I was like, okay. And then he kept me, had me reading on to, um, to verse 9. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If in the fact that the spirit of God dwells in you. So the spirit of the Lord dwells in us. And everyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. And on a, verse 11, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through the spirit who dwells in you. So he will resurrect your body because the spirit lives in you. And I was like, yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your resurrection power through Christ Jesus. And then down to 12, verse 12, um, he says, so then brothers, we are, we are debtors. Not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. He's saying, do not live according to the flesh. Live according to the spirit. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the spirit you put to death, the deeds of the body, you will live. So whatever you are doing that is considered a sin, he wants you to cease. He wants you to stop. He wants you to stop what you are doing and put your eyes on him and him alone. For all who are laid by the spirit of God and sons of God. For you do not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption. For you are a joint heir, he says. You are a joint heir with him him Christ Jesus for you are a child of the most high God and I was like yes Lord amen amen and when he said that he, he was like by whom we cry Abba Father the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are, ch are children of God and if children then hares Hairs of God and followers and, 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 and fellow hairs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. So I was like, yes, yes, thank you, Father. I give you all the glory. Glory be to God. And he led me on to um, read on to verse 18. And he was, and he said, for I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. He said, do not look um, at your present time. Don't look at your current um, season. He said, not to compare what. Is ahead of you with what you see now. He said that he will reveal it to us in due, in due time. For the creation waits and eager, for we wait as his creation with eager longing for revealing of the sons of God. For we are the sons, we are the sons of God. For the creation was subject to fulfill to fruitful to what he say to flutiny not whitney not willingly but because of him who subjected in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption 
And it, that will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. He said, don't cor corrupt yourself with the bondage. Don't hold on to your past. Look forward to him. Keep your eyes on him and allow him to direct your path. Um, for you find you will obtain freedom in his glory as a child of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. For whatever we are birthing right now in this season, he has given us the strength to hold on. He has given us the strength to gather ourselves according to the spirit. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inward as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope, we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? He asked you a question. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, he said we shall wait for it with patience. So again, he's been dealing with me, dealing with me also with my patience in this area of my life, um, waiting on him and knowing that he's there with me, that he will never leave me nor forsake me, never leave me nor forsake me or you. That likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself intercede for us with groanings too deep for words and he who searches hearts knows what the man of the spirit excuse me mind of the spirit not man for we are the man that searches um god's own heart as we uh seek his face through his word and um, wait to hear for his voice for a confirmation. And he said, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the first born among many brothers. So he said he predestined us according to his purpose for our lives and that he conformed us in his image as his son, um, that he adopted us as a son and he said, those who he called, and I mean, he said he also, also, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. For those whom he predestined, he also called. And those who he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. So he gives you the glory also as you glorify him and give him all the praise and give him all the honor and seek his face and seek your his will for your life. Um, he shows you the light in him. Also, he gives you the glory. He also glorifies. He also uh, you are also glorified in him as he is the only just God that can judge where you are at this particular time in your life. And he's the only one that gives you everlasting, um, the everlasting love through, through salvation, which is the, uh, the redemption of our bodies as, um, we wait to be adopted 
as sons in Christ Jesus. He kept me going reading on to uh, verse 31. Um, what then shall we say to these things? That was another question again. He said, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Nobody can take the place of God. For he is the head and never, never the tail, above only and not beneath. Which makes you the head and never the tail, above only and not beneath. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him gloriously give us all things? How can he not freely give us the glory uh, that we seek from him? As we put, put and keep him first in our life. And he said, who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who, who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the only one who died. More than that, who has risen, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. So the Lord is interceding for us, even when we don't understand and, and, and um, um, what's going on in our, in our life right now. The Lord is interceding for us as... We seek his face as we continue to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us as we um, intercede on the behalf of others, our family, our unsaved loved ones, um, our children, our pastors, our um, co-workers, whoever it may be that God puts on your heart to pray for. He said, also, Christ intercedes for us. And he said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And I was like, no one, daddy. No one can separate us from you and your love. And he was like, shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? He said, for it is written. And I was like, yes, Lord, it is written. For I just read it just now. And you just confirmed.